Okay, in the co-main event of UFC 279 at a catch weight of 180 pounds, Hamzat Shimaev defeated Kevin Holland by submission via Dar's choke. The official time coming at 2 minutes and 13 seconds of the very first round. And what is probably uh, cannot be argued the most dominant performance on the entire card. Omar, let me start with you. What, what were your impressions and your reactions to Shimaev pretty much dominating a very talented welterweight slash middleweight in Kevin Holland? So I have a hot take. While I was impressed by Shemaev's ability to do that to Kevin Holland, I am not impressed if that's his game plan with every fight going forward. Because as soon as he runs into somebody who can not... Because here's the thing, right? Like, it's easy to say, yeah, go 100% on a guy right from the jump, but there's a reason why people don't do that on a regular basis. And at some point... (laughs) Somebody, Kevin Holland is probably the guy to do it against. Maybe that was a choice on his part because Kevin Holland's not the best defensive grappler, right, that there is, um, at least when it comes to takedowns specifically themselves. Um, we, I did think that he had more opportunities when it came to, you know, finding a, a submission in an opportunistic moment in, in, in situations like that. But Chemayev did the right thing and was basically behind his back the entire time that those exchanges were going on and was able to kind of be completely dominant and overwhelming but against people at the top especially at 170 like do you think he's gonna do that to usman or colby like as much as i don't like colby i don't think colby's gonna get fucking ragdoll like that like by any stretch of the imagination uh and so as soon as you have chemayev blowing gas 100 percent for two and a half minutes of the first round i i would imagine he has good cardio but like he's a human being still and at some point, he's going to hit a wall, and he's not going to have that same explosiveness, whereas the guy he's fighting might have preserved himself a little bit better. And as, you know, as far as impressive performances go, yes, this was an impressive performance. I just think people are sucking the D a little too hard and not thinking about the overall aspect of exactly what that performance might tell us about how he's going to perform in the near future. Because, again, 170 at the top is filled with really good wrestlers and they are a problem and you've got guys like Usman you've got guys like Colby you've got guys like Leon Edwards who if you want to sleep on him because of his last performance you can but Leon Edwards is very good with his wrestling as well um they just a lot I just have questions Brady. I have questions yeah a lot of wrestlers. yeah uh, so, Pat- I mean he's already fought one of them he already fought Gilbert Burns so he kind of ran that experiment once Gilbert Burns is not a wrestler, Burns, though. Yeah, he's a grappler. I wouldn't call Gilbert Burns a wrestler, but he's not a wrestler. He's a it's a, it, there's yeah, but Gilbert Burns is the guy who likes to be on the bottom because he thinks he's going to submit you. There's a different mentality when you're a wrestler sure. because your whole life you're taught your shoulders better not hit the fucking mat, let alone you be on the bottom. So it's 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 a whole different thing. Jujitsu is like, yeah, brother, come in my leg. I call you, I get you. <laughs> It's that's not it's not the shit that it's not that's, that's not what they're doing in wrestling. Thank you. I love that you begin your just generic Brazilian jiu jitsu master impression with the witch is like, eh. <laughs> <laughs> eh, bro, you come to my leg. That was it. He said, eh. Okay. You can blame Mark, every Brazilian jiu jitsu guy I've ever seen. The show just got shut down. <laughs> Oh, Mark, <laughs> just um, speak. I did think this was a specific to Kevin Holland choice. I think, first of all, I think it's possible that he knew he wasn't feeling his best after the weight cut drama. And that combined with the fact that he thought he could ragdoll Kevin Holland. He was just like, fuck it. I'm going to just go out and jump on this guy right out of the gate. So... Who knows, but I do think that was a choice that he made. Uh, Unfortunately, we got robbed a bit here because this thing was over before we knew it. There was a lot of intriguing angles to this fight like we discussed on Saturday. And, uh, you know, we didn't didn't even get to see it. We wanted to see the striking play out because of Kevin Holland's length. We didn't get to see a single ounce of that. And we didn't even really get to see, like, a true grappling exchange that Holland was prepared for. I'm not sure how exactly I want to word this, but like the fact that Kevin Holland was going for a glove touch sucked that night. I was furious because 
to me, I thought that Hamzat looked like he faked the glove touch and shot oh. a takedown. Since then, I've watched replays from other angles. I saw him get interviewed. He seemed very sincere about the fact that he didn't even see it. Like, he was very much like, I, what, what glove touch? Like, I don't even know what you're talking about. So I will give him the benefit of the doubt. I hope that he didn't fake a glove touch. If he did, that fucking sucks and fuck that guy. But I'll give him the benefit of the doubt and say that he didn't. Um, personally, I wish they would just say no more glove touches to start a fight. Like, as soon hmm. as the bell rings, you're fighting. Because there's too many. It happens more often on the regional scene than in the UFC because obviously the spotlight's on you. People don't want to do dumb shit. But you see it way too often on the regional scene where a guy goes for a glove touch and gets fucking knocked out because the other idiot is not glove touching and just punches him in the face. So I wish we would just get rid of glove touches altogether. But back to the fight. Um, yeah, so it just all happened so fast that we kind of got robbed because, like, as much as Holland did well on the ground, and he's a black belt in jiu-jitsu after all, he was just in such a compromised position. Like, Chimaev was in so close right away from when Holland went for this glove touch that Holland could never even, like, get free. He could never even reset. And mm -hmm. it was just, he was, Shamayev was in so tight, it, even through all the scrambles and everything. Like, Holland never got to take that breath and let us actually see how it would have started without Holland getting caught off guard like that. So that kind of sucked. But either way, Shamayev's an animal. Who knows? Maybe the outcome's exactly the same. Um, that whole choke sequence was incredible. It start it started at three fifty four of that round and did not end until two forty seven. It was a minute and seven seconds of Holland fighting that choke as much as he possibly could, scrambling, turning to his back, turning to his stomach, rolling out, changing positions, and Shemaev just floating, keeping the arms interlocked, re tightening when he had to, loosening when he had to, to keep Holland in his control. It was a hell of a job from both guys. Holland to, to fight it and try to escape, and he almost got out. And, and Shemaev just to <laughs> keep rolling with that thing and not lose it and, and eventually tighten it up and, and hook Holland's leg and be able to roll to the top the way that he did. So it was impressive as hell. You know, what can you say? Obviously, we know Shemaev is unbelievable. It's another performance where he doesn't get touched. Zero strikes. I think that's fucking four times now or something. It's insanity. Um we don't know if the guy is a welterweight or middleweight going forward. Obviously, this was not a great look. I've, I've heard his coach already talking about how he thinks the next fight is going to be at middleweight. So it's a little weird, Shemaev, the way he's kind of doing this in that he got this high at welterweight, and now they're talking about middleweight again. So it's it's kind of a unique road that he's taking, but wherever he goes, the guy is a friggin' monster. So can't take anything away from the performance. Yeah, I have had the same reaction as you of thinking that it really tarnishes the entire win, the fact that Holland was going for a touch glove uh, while she might have shot. But honestly, just playing devil's advocate with myself, <laughs> would it have made a difference? Probably not. We're talking, we're probably talking mere seconds until, you know, she might shoots and, and just wraps up Holland's legs eventually and just goes to work. My boy, my oh thing boy. with it though is it's 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 a it's equivalent though in my in in my belief it's equivalent to like a sucker punch, like sure oh yeah it, yeah I hate oh, it. So you think he did fake it? I don't know if he faked it or not, but Kevin Holland was definitely going for a glove touch and Shemaev, like well, but I'm saying his I, point I, is I, that he's saying he didn't even see it. How do you not? See I don't it, think though? he. I don't. I, that's my point, right? He's like I think he saw he it. I just don't think he I, gave a shit. He said, I'm not looking at his hands. I'm looking at his face and shooting for my takedown. That's what he said. Yeah, I don't I just don't think he gave a shit. Whether he saw it or not, I don't think like I don't think he was gonna take the time to be like no glove touch. I think he was just gonna yeah, do what yeah, he was clearly. gonna do. In yeah. it, at the same point, like, why the fuck are you going for a glove cut touch, Kevin Holland? You were about to cut this man like twenty four hours ago and now you wanna give him a fucking high five before you go to war? Get to work, son. High five him after. Hamza was ready to make out with him after the fight was done. It was all good and go. Like to be like, I'm just I'm as equally annoyed as I am with with Hamza. I'm probably more annoyed with Kevin Holland because that was a choice, and Kevin Holland seems to be equally annoyed with himself post fight. Um, I don't know if he did damage to Kevin Holland's shoulder, but he Kevin Holland looked like his shoulder was fucked up by the end yeah, of that he was fight. So. A lot. 
I wonder if yeah, we might not see Kevin Holland for a minute. I think the lesson here for all fighters is that unless you discuss the glove touch with your opponent, don't fucking go for a glove touch. Because yeah, the other yeah. guy doesn't know that's what you're doing. And it's a fight. Definitely I mean, do it often, right at the beginning of the round, right? Like, we see people all the time, like, yeah. you know, point to the other guy across yeah, the cage, right. like, touch gloves, right. touch gloves, cool. And some people say no, and we move on. Right, exactly. Or oh. just, like, try to get that communication out there way beforehand. Be like, yo, yeah. we're not touching gloves. Okay, cool. Or, like, have my coach tell your team. Right. Like, my guy, hey, our guy doesn't want to touch gloves. Okay, cool. Yeah. Sometimes people feel it in the moment, though. Like, it's it's part of that process, I think, right? Like, being in the cage and being across from somebody. Like, that part I get. But, yeah, I, but I think... I think I think Mark's right, though. Like, there has to be, like, you don't assume that this guy's going to be cool with it because you're right. probably going to get punched in the face. You didn't have time to ask him, then fucking don't do it. Yeah. Short of some guy, like, walking up to the center of the cage calmly with his hand stretched out, don't do it. Don't do it. I mean, I'd have to rewatch it to see if, if Shemaya was potentially he faked his own glove touch and then ducked under, but I think at the very least that he just clearly ignored Holland's glove touch. and He just... raises his left hand. And I thought it was a fake glove touch. But the more I watch it, and after hearing his description, I'm like, fuck, maybe it's not. And I don't want to bash a guy for such a dirty move if he didn't actually do it. So I'm trying sure. to not assume. There is a lot of gray oh, yeah. area I based on, on what this is. Yeah. Um, I did forget to say, how about post-fight interview? And I feel like 80% of the MMA world, 95%, has not realized that this occurred. In the post-fight interview, Chimaev says, the doctor stopped me. I was lower than 179. The doctor mm -hmm. stopped me. And I knew that fight, that night I was going to fight this guy. So I made my weight come up to his weight in reference to Kevin Holland. So he tells the world that he knew on Thursday night that he was fighting Kevin Holland. What's the news here? So, well, I don't understand. What's the big deal? Because they made it sound like when it was happening that it didn't happen until that morning. That all of this was a surprise that morning. And that they were all trying to scramble that morning to figure everything out. But that wasn't the case because they knew the night before. Which is what I and said the, on our Saturday show. That the weight of 179 was so suspicious to me. And it made me feel like he didn't actually try to cut weight. And that he knew all along he was fighting Kevin Holland. And uh, fucking most people I said that to were like, no way, no way. And he literally said that in the cage. The other thing, too, is they kept talking about how it was the physician that made them stop the, the weight cut. And a lot. it was funny because a lot of the fighters are like, are y'all people fucking stupid? Like, you saw Aspen Ladd almost die, like, a couple months ago, and they were fine with letting her fight. Like, the doctors don't give a shit. If they're ready to fight, they'll fight. And uh, and it was the coach, supposedly, according to Brett Akamoto, that was saying that the coach was the one who stopped uh, Chamaya from cutting more weight and forced him to drink water to gain weight or to, you know, put, put the pounds back on or whatever the hell. So it was a lot of, it's a lot of bamboozly shit going on for this event. You know, I'm telling you, they called Dana that night. They were like, our weight cuts fucked up. Dana knew Nate wouldn't fight him. And Dana was like, what are you at? Who knows what he was at? Maybe he's at 174 or five. Who knows what the fuck he's at? And Dana was like, all right, we're going to, we got Kevin Holland on this card. They already got beef. We're going to figure this out. And called oh, Kevin Holland and Shemaev was like, dope. I'm going to, I'm going to rehydrate back up to 179 since that's what Kevin Holland is. Which is basically what Holland, what Shemaev confirmed in the cage. It's pretty much what he said. Man, Credit to Joe Rogan just... for reminding Shemaev that he needs to make weight though. Because it seems like Shemaev was under the impression that it's cool to not make weight. Uh, and so I'm glad I'm glad Joe Rogan reminded him that it's that it's not it's not cool to not make weight. Yeah, it's uh it's just amazing that that matchup got made to begin with ever. Uh, Shemai versus Nate Diaz. I I cannot believe that that matchup got made. That's Dude, it annoys me. I like Dana, but it that's annoys the worst me. Of it annoys me now more than ever that people don't make weight because now I like I like. I'm in a gym with people who are constantly trying to fight and make weight and go to these events and things like that. And there's one kid who fought this past weekend for our gym for Tampa Muay Thai. Uh, Gabo is his name. Dude took over somebody who couldn't fight that weekend from our gym, 
took over the fight last minute, two days notice, made weight, fought, won the fight. What was wow. his excuse? Wow. Like, Good for I got to do better, man. Got to do better. Hey, let's talk about real quick where these two guys go from here. We are, uh, we're getting a little long on time, guys. Wow, we are. Jeez. Well, let's start with the winner um, here. Hamza Shimaev. Mark, give me a name at, uh, I guess, middleweight, since that's what they're hinting at. So I'll give you both. Okay. Uh, if it's yeah. welterweight, which is what I wish it was, just because, yeah, yeah I, I get he started at middleweight. But this whole climb, like he just fucking beat Gilbert Burns one fight ago. I feel like we got to finish out the welterweight thing after we beat Gilbert Burns. So I hope it's at welterweight. If it is, I think it's got to be Colby. I think it's where we are. I think Colby answers the questions that we want to see answered in relation to Chmaev. Uh, in terms of what Omar was referencing about how hard he comes out the gate and what happens when he fights a guy like a Colby who we know is never going to mentally break. He fucking, his jaw was hanging off against Usman, and he's like, nah, nah, I'm fine. I'm trying to keep fighting here. We know he's not going to go away. We know Chemayev can't just bully him, or, or can he, I guess, is the question. Can he physically bully him? So I think that's the fight that makes easily the most sense of any fighter on the roster to match Chemayev up with at this point. If Colby is still going to be out a while, I guess you could go with the Bilal Sean Brady winner, which would also be an intriguing matchup for Chemayev. And if he does say he's going back to middleweight, which would kind of suck, part of me wants to say, like, all right, well, he should be fighting, like, maybe a fringe-ranked fighter or something since he hasn't really proven it at middleweight. Like, his best middleweight win is Gerald Mearshart. But I do feel like Chemayev has become such a star that that doesn't even make sense and that he'd have to fight a name. So, the guy we were struggling to match up uh, last week was Marvin Vittori. We said maybe Strickland wow. or Cannon here. They just got booked against each other. If Chemayev is going to middleweight, hey, fuck wow. it. I'll put him with Marvin Vittori. Vittori. Wow, that's the shooting him up to the very top of the middleweight division. Yeah, I just feel like he's such a star that you don't, you almost don't have a choice. Like, if you booked Chemayev against, like, a Brendan Allen. Like, right. it feels I was like gonna say Chris Curtis, doing? even though right. you know what I mean. It's like it doesn't, you know. Was a uh, was Mearshart the last middleweight that he beat? Yes. Okay. Yeah. 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 Uh, I mean, who? You, yeah, you're gonna book him against like Duplessis? Like that doesn't make sense. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you this: it's got to be Colby for for welterweight. Like I, I need, I need the Colby fight. I need it. All day. So there's that. I mean, just looking at the middleweight rankings, it is so much more interesting to me for Shimaev to be at 185. They're just really? more. I mean, at 170, he's just such a juggernaut, man. Do you think I, that he would walk right through Colby? No, I, absolutely I, I, not. I think Colby. I think Colby gives up a lot of size to Shimaev, man. He does, but I would still love to see that fight. I mean, Agreed. they're basically in like different. They're just in different weight classes, man. It's just in different weight classes. Yeah, Kobe's I mean, not Kobe's that not small though, but it's, but he's also not that small. And at, and at the same time, there's there's still there's still questions there though. It's not. I don't think it's an easy it's an easy one to answer. Unfortunately for that for that fight, I think there's Col again for all the shit talk I talk about. Colby, like Colby's a good fucking fighter. He's a d decent wrestler, decent striker. When he puts it all together, like I said before. The kid is borderline on it's unstoppable when he puts it all wow. together. It would be a very interesting matchup, but I think that Covington has obviously the wrestling pedigree to not get completely shut out on the ground, but I think he would just get overall mauled. Wow. It's just so much size. It's just so much size. It's a lot of size. At 170. I, I agree. It's a lot of size. He doesn't have that same size against like an Usman. I mean, he still has. I will size, say, but it's not. It's not like everyone else he matches up with. It's like, wow, he's so much bigger. At one eighty-five, especially now with the way that things have gone down this last week, I need the Costa fight at one eighty-five. Costa and yeah. him have gone back and forth, and if you're going to give him Vittori, then give him Costa for that. Only reason I didn't say it, I know they have their beef is because I really want to see Costa and Whitaker, so I, I stayed away. But I know they've had their oh. shit. So you're right; that could easily happen. Yeah. Apparently, Robert Whitaker wants to be like Dungeons and Dragon Slayers with Chmaev now. We're talking about training and slaying bad yeah. guys together and whatever the hell else. Yeah. Yeah. 
Uh, real quick, let's let's talk Kevin Holland for a second. Where does he go next at 170 pounds, Mark? Um, I don't mind giving Holland another big fight. Um, you know, he kind of saved this card in a way. Yeah. Kind of got screwed a little bit with the glove touch. Like, I'm happy to reward Kevin Holland. I've mentioned this fight before. I think him and Luke would be a fun fight, and Luke's lost recently. I, I think that's a cool one. That's a great matchup. Omar, have you any other names? I would actually not hate the Stephen Thompson fight. I think him versus Wonder Boy is very, very sure. interesting. And I think to watch Kevin Holland try to solve the puzzle of Wonder Boy with his Kevin Hollandness would be super interesting. I'm very interested to see Kevin Hollandness. <laughs> Kevin Hollandness. I'm very interested to see where Shimaev is in the Prio rankings, but we will get there. But in the meantime, we got to keep going, guys. We, we've only gotten through the main and co-main of fucking events. Yeah, we got to move. Okay.